Did you ever wonder why a blooming patch of milkweed smells so good? That smell comes from the copious amounts of nectar the milkweed produces to attract the pollinators it needs to visit its flowers so it can reproduce. But unlike many flowers that are loaded with pollen and an insect basically gets dusted with it willy-nilly as it retrieves its nectar reward, the milkweeds are much more tactical about things. Their pollen is prepackaged in little paired packets called pollinia, and how they end up on an insect is quite incredible. Basically, as Admiral Akbar said in Return of the Jedi, it's a trap. Not a trap meant to kill, although that does happen from time to time. Oops, more on this in a minute, but rather a highly specialized sequence of events meant to ensure future generations of milkweed. To understand how this works, we need to look at the structure of the milkweed flower. The flowers of the milkweed form in what botanists call an umbel, a bunch of flowers growing on stalks originating from the same point. What you see is those big, beautiful clusters of milkweed flowers. This will be important in a bit. What we need to look at now is the corona. Not the virus or the beer, but the showy upper portion of an individual flower. The corona is star-shaped, and the star is made up of five slick hood structures. It is at the base of each of these hoods that the nectar pools. Now hang with me here. I'm going to explain this the best I can. It gets a bit intense. In the center of the corona is a structure made up of the fused male and female parts of the flower with a nice cap on top of it. This structure has five slits in it that are positioned such that an insect trying to get the nectar from the hood may slip its foot, antenna, mouth parts, or some other appendage into the base of the slit. Still with me? Let me know by pollinating that like button. I promise it's not a trap. So why go through all this trouble to get a bug's foot in this slit? Remember the pollinia I mentioned at the beginning? There is one on each side of the slit, and they are connected by little arms to a structure called the corpusculum at the top of the slit, in a V-shaped configuration. This whole contraption is called a pollinarium, and it is what the insect will hopefully fly away with. Once an insect has an appendage in the slit, it cannot pull it out the same way it went in, as there are hairs in the tube that only allow movement upwards. As the insect pulls its leg up the tube and reaches the top, it gets to the narrow part of the pollinarium V, the base of the corpusculum, which has sharp, tapering inside edges. When the insect can go no farther, the corpusculum clamps down on the insect's leg. It's trapped, but hopefully not for long. The trap is meant to ensure pollination, not kill the would-be pollinator. A big and powerful insect can power out, pulling the pollinarium with it. Insects like bumblebees, larger butterflies, some moths, and wasps like spider and katydid hunters have no problem pulling free with the pollinarium in tow. For the non-native European honeybee, it can be a far different outcome. They are large enough to get caught in the trap, but are right on the edge of being big and powerful enough to escape. Most do get away. Some escape because they can remove the appendage. Ouch! Some are caught until they succumb from their struggling. But please don't think milkweed is bad because a few honeybees get caught and die. Far more visit the flowers with zero consequences. It is just one of the many interesting facts about milkweed pollination. Did you ever imagine pollination could be this complex and intense? Let me know what you think down in the comments. So now that an insect has a pollinarium latched onto it, how does it pollinate another milkweed flower? First, the arms that connect the pollinia to the corpusculum dry as the insect flies, changing the angle of the pollinia. After that, it just takes the insect visiting another milkweed flower and the process starts the same as before. The insect goes for the nectar and slips its foot into the slit, except this time the angled pollinia catch at the base. Now the insect must break the arms that connect the pollinia to the corpusculum to escape. When the arms break, the pollinia drop into a chamber where fertilization can occur. Pretty awesome, isn't it? But wait, there's more. Our pollinating insect isn't out of the pollination business yet. The stubs left when the pollinia are pulled free are the perfect size and shape to gather up another pollinarium when the insect pulls its leg back up the slit. So once an insect successfully pollinates a milkweed flower, it is setting itself up to do it over and over. A vicious cycle of getting trapped and pollinating flowers, but one we should all love because it's how we get more milkweed. Remember I said the umble would be important way back at the beginning? Even though there are a ton of flowers in a single milkweed flower umble, only one individual flower, sometimes two, will make seeds. After a flower is pollinated, the other flowers in the umbel wither and fall off and the pollinated flower forms the well-known milkweed seed pods. Think about all the energy that plant put forth to produce seeds from one or two flowers per umbel. It is truly amazing. Milkweeds are important plants in our environment. 
Not only because they are the host plant for the monarch butterfly, but because of the immense number of insects that use it, which in turn also attract a whole array of other critters. To learn about this, check out this video and be sure to get out and explore nature in your backyard.